<clears throat> well, good evening. For tonight's Bible study, uh, we'll be in the Song of Solomon there. Got that showing on the screen. Uh, Solomon chapter 5, verses 6 through 16. Talking about relational investment. Uh, last week, we talked about the foundation, the relational foundation. <clears throat> and um, a lot of people get... You got to remember in the Song of Solomon, they're talking about two phases, a man and wife relationship and, and also our relationship between us and the Lord. Please don't leave that out when you study this book. <clears throat> it's vital to our growth as a Christian. And uh, so I just encourage you to do that and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that tonight. Now, now <clears throat> some have asked me uh, if my wife wrote this book and the answer is No. You'll see why as we read chapter 5, uh, these, the latter part of chapter 5 this evening. You'll see why they thought that, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, so Song of Solomon chapter 5, uh, verses 6 through 16. Uh, just, just a good word to us, for us. And um, hope it'll encourage you. Miss Terry, good to see you at church this morning. Um She's been coming to Sunday school or her Bible study class. They've been meeting down in the other buildings. She's been able to do that and not been able to tolerate two uh, consecutive, uh, you know, with Preacher Mark preaching and Tony Arnold teaching. That's about four hours worth of Bible time to set. <laughs> but anyway, you, you, you know, we were glad to see you this morning. Miss Jean, hope you're doing good. Miss Naomi Walker was there this morning. She had a whole pew load full of folks and uh <clears throat> miss bridget we missed you this morning hope you're doing okay um didn't see you see you in the choir choir was down this morning quite a bit but the the, the focus of the pew was way up way up had almost as many people in the second service at 11 as we did in the nine o'clock service so it was a it was absolutely a great day ed uh didn't see you this morning. I hope you're doing well, <clears throat> and hope you'll enjoy this study tonight. Now, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to I want to ask you a question. All right, so we're gonna play a little game here. Let me see if I can pull this up, get it going here. Let me flip this on and put this up here. The game of life. Now, this is a newer version, a picture of a newer version, but here is the game of life. Oh, wait a minute. Miss Carolyn says she has no sound. Does anybody else not have sound? Anybody want to comment? We have sound. Oh, Carolyn, you're tricking me. You're tricking me, Carolyn. While she's trying to get her sound turned on, hey, this game of life that's showing on the screen, what year, look at the screen there, what year do you think the game, the game of life, was created? What year do you think the game, the game of life, was created? I'll take your guesses on that one. And, and the one that uh, gets the closest will win a prize. I don't know what the prize will be, but we'll find something to give to you. If you get it right, we'll, we will do it. We'll give you something. But anyway, what year do you think the game, the game of life, was created. No guesses. Darren Lawson says 1964. So far, he's the closest. He's the only one that's guessed. <laughs> Terry says 1975. Bridget, 1962. All right. Good guesses. Not anywhere near close, but they're all good guesses. Uh, Carolyn Davis is, she must have sound, maybe she has sound now. She says, in the 1800s. Holy mackerel, Carolyn, how old are you? Oh, my goodness, Phil Holmes, 1968, Amy Mathis, 1955. Oh, my goodness, you all really are good at just guessing, aren't you? Well, let me tell you, the game of life was actually created originally, originally, it was created in, Miss Carolyn, use the winner, 1860. 1860. 
Uh, it was uh, republished 100 years later in 1960 and um, had all kinds of, of different revisions to it and all those kind of things. As a matter of fact, in 2018, the little cars, if you remember the little cars in the game, <clears throat> the little cars now have some square <laughs> square holes and some round holes in it to, to distinguish between the people and the pets that you put in your car. Can you believe that? So that changed in 2018. But but the game has stood, obviously it has stood the test of time. Um, because we choose, like our own lives, we, we choose and, and, you know, it's the choices that we make moving toward the end. It's the choices that we make, and it'll stand the test of time. 1,800. Can you believe that? Way to go, Carolyn Davis. You win the prize. Um, we'll give you a free CD. <laughs> a free CD of Preacher Mark preaching. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's look at God's Word before I get in trouble. All right. Relational investment. First part of Song of Solomon we want to remember is that uh, this is Solomon and his wife, a Shumite woman, and the talking back and forth. It starts out with a dream. Last week, uh, his lesson started out with uh, being her in a dream she can't find, you know, and all that, all that went on, and she was trying to get everything established, and she kind of... In, in um, please don't get me wrong when I say this, lady. In 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 typical ladylike fashion, she kind of freaked out a little bit, and everything calmed down. And everything was good. All right. So this week we want to talk about the investment in it. In our relationship, it takes an investment. It doesn't just happen. People think it just it just it relationships don't just happen. Okay, it don't just happen. It's a reality of that it takes time to put into it. All right? It takes time to put into it. And um, those things happen because of, uh, oh, it just, it, you know, I don't, I, let me say it like this. It's, it's so crazy, the fact that some people think that we're going to get married and everything's going to be lovely. Oh my goodness. You need to be kicked in the head because it's not going to be just because you don't do anything. Unless you put some investment into it, it's not going to work out. It won't happen. It's just like with raising your kids. Do you think that they're going to be in the situation where they're going to just grow up with if nothing, if we actually do nothing? Seriously? No. Well, our, our relationship is the same way. It's the same way, and that's that's how we need to look at our relationship, not only with our spouses, with our mates, but also with the Lord. That relationship is an investment. So let's look at the first passage of Scripture there. And the first passage of Scripture is <clears throat> the cry for companionship in verses 6 through 8. And she writes and she says, I opened for my beloved. But my beloved had turned away and was gone. My heart leaped up when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen who went about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the wall took my veil away from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, you tell him that I'm lovesick. Man, listen, I mean, is this not the mate that you want? She woke up, he's not around, and she just goes crazy. Where is he? I got to find him. I got to look for him. I hollered out for him. And then when she went to look for him, all kinds of bad things happened. Now, if you remember last week <clears throat> when she found the watchman, the watchman in the city, you know what they did last week? In, in that passage of Scripture is they helped her look. This week we find that they didn't help her look. As a matter of fact, they, they struck her, they wounded her, took her veil away from her, disgraced her. <clears throat> These are things that we need to understand. 
as we do this, remember, don't get caught up in just that. What are these watchmen? What is that trying to say? Get caught up in the fact that what we're trying to say, what the Lord is trying to say to you here is this. The cry for companionship is great. This woman woke up, her companion was gone, and she sought him. She went out to find him and couldn't find him. She hollered for him. She encouraged others to come and help her. And when she did, they didn't help in a good way, not at all. She encouraged the women of Jerusalem, hey, if you find him, you let him know that he's mine, and I'm still lovesick over him. I, I'm heartbroken. My, 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 my heart is crushed that he's not here. The cry for companionship is great, and if you're in that state in your life, listen, there's nothing wrong with it. It's normal. God created us to have a companion. God created us to have relationships with one another, and, and we're to be all about that. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing that we need to remember is this, that God created us to have that relationship, first of all, with him, and that should be number one. That should be our focus. But second of all, number two is with our spouse, not with anybody else. Search for that one. If you're having a cry for companionship, go to that one. But before you go to that one, listen, here's what Preacher Mark and I always tell folks that come to us for counseling, is first of all, what's your relationship with the Lord like right now? Let's get that cleaned up first, because that's the most important. If that one's not fixed, listen, you're not going to fix the rest of it. You're not going to fix the one with your mate. You're not going to fix the one with your kid. You're not going to fix the one with your parents. It's not going to happen if you don't have the relationship fixed between you and the Lord, and it's a cry out to Him. I mean, seriously, let me ask you this. When was the last time you cried out to Him? Not cried out to Him and said, Oh, Lord, here, I, oh, woe is me. You know, I got a message this afternoon, and uh, got a message this afternoon and it was not a cry for help, but it was a message to let us know <clears throat> that Jeff Terranova was in the hospital. I uh, didn't know he'd been in the hospital. He's in the hospital and uh, having some problems, and uh, I spent the last night there, and uh, don't know when he might get to come home, but uh, having some problems, difficulties. That, that's not the cry of help that, that this Shumite woman is having right here. This cry is an urgent plea. Oh, where are you? Where are you? I searched everywhere, and when I couldn't find you, I searched a little more, and, 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 and the watchman found me and beat me up. They wounded me. They took my veil away from me. So I would be exposed, so I'd be ashamed. There, there is a cry for companionship, and it's a strong cry, and we need to realize that it's an okay to have that kind of cry out. When, when, when our heart leaps, you know, If we could remember, let's see if I can get this to where I want it to sound just right, okay? If we could remember when we have a problem in a relationship with someone, if we could remember that, first of all, we need to check our relationship with Christ, I believe that most of those other relationships would be resolved. This Shumite woman, whether you believe she was in a dream or whether this was real, either one, either one you believe, my beloved was gone. My, my heart leaped. I, I, I sought him. I looked for him. I urgently called out for him, but no answer. There, there is a cry for companionship. How do we strengthen that cry? 
how do we strengthen that relationship so we're not always crying out? What good we do? Y'all did real good with the guessing game on the game of life, and I, I saw in there, Carolyn, you actually cheated a little bit because you had, uh, you had uh, already had your Sunday school lesson, <laughs> so you'd already knew the answer. But that's okay. I'll still give you a CD of Preacher Mark preaching, okay? So, because I want you to have that, because I can't, I can't get nobody else to take. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Preacher Mark. I'm just kidding. The cry that we have out is is valid. It's a God thing. But listen, what circumstances? Have you noticed how emotional and moral support strengthens the marriage? Give me a simple circumstance where 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 you have noticed uh, emotional and moral support strengthening a marriage. Has a family member ever gone through a crisis and your spouse was there with you? Have you ever experienced a, a problem and your spouse was there to help you. Recently, my daughter-in-law had an automobile accident and, and uh, no one else was in the car but her. And uh, she was fine. The other people were fine. But the, the car, <coughs> uh, from the, the picture that I got, uh, I said it looked like it needed to be towed. And uh, they said, well, the men there and the police officer said, well, they thought you could drive it. And after I looked at the picture, I thought, well, maybe you could. You'd have to check right there at the tire where that was bent in and stuff. You know, can you pull that out? Is it rubbing the tire? You know, you got to move it. And that's done. And all that was clear. So they decided to drive it home. Well, <clears throat> got on the, of course, got on the interstate and started back home. Of course, you know, the accident never close by on the other part of, on the other side of Knoxville. So, uh, got on the interstate and we're headed back and the, um, Eric said the, the hood of the car flew up. And when the hood of the car flew up, it flew back and, and cracked the windshield. So, could you drive it? Yes. But, was it damaged? Yes. Would it be damaged later? Yes. Was he glad that he was driving it and not his wife? Absolutely. Was she? Absolutely. He was there when she needed some support. That's what we do. That at times when we can strengthen our marriages when we show support for one another. Well, nobody give me an example. Nobody give me a comment there. So I'll go on to part number two. The call for remembering. Look at verse number 9 of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 9. What is your beloved more than another? Now, this is the, 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 the women or the wives of, of, of Jerusalem, the ladies of Jerusalem that she had just called out to and said, you know, if you see him, tell him I'm lovesick. <coughs> Daughters of Jerusalem, in verse 8. Now in verse number nine, they're calling back to her. And listen, listen to verse number nine. Does this sound like America today? Verse number nine, what is your beloved? Is it more than any other? Oh, fairest one among women. What is your beloved more than another? That you so charge us. What they're saying is, why in the world are you telling us to do this? Is he really worth all that? What was the old... My, my dad used to say this when, when I was in school. So don't worry about one. Or my sister as well. He told us all. Don't worry about this when you have a problem with one. There's uh, many fish in the sea. That, that was what he would say. And there's many fish in the sea. Sometimes he'd say there's other fish in the sea, but usually he would say many. That's what the daughters of Jerusalem are saying here. Why in the world are you so worried about this one when do you not realize what makes him so special that you would charge us? 
to go get him for you and to tell him that you're sick. Sick because he's not there. What is it that makes him so, so valuable? See, the problem today is we think, you, you ever heard this say, the grass is greener on the other side? I don't know that I've ever been in a time when uh, there was more of that taking place. Where people thought the grass was greener on the other side for one reason or another. And, and it's just not. The reason it's this way is because God established it and he says to them, hey, if you want to have that relationship, it's going to take some work and we don't want to work for it anymore. Now, I'm not going to get into that debate, but I am going to say this. It takes a little effort. It takes a little work for just about anything that we do. You know, on, on, on Sunday morning, uh, on on Sunday morning, um, I'm back in the back. A lot of times you see me and don't see me. I'm in the back, running the computer, throwing things up on uh, on Facebook for the recordings and stuff. And uh, the, the the challenge that I have back there, the the computer components is not that complicated. Getting all that, you know, working in one way or another. And I'm in I'm in uh, working with some other fellas to come along and. If you'd be interested in doing that, let me know because I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to get some folks to be doing that so that if something were to happen, I weren't able, I wasn't able to be there one Sunday, somebody else could take over and run it. But <clears throat> the, the, the most difficult part of it when, when we're doing that on Sundays or on Wednesdays is to hear it, to hear how it's going out to you, to see if you have sound. I have to have an earphone in, and I have to listen to it from my phone on Facebook. Well, the challenge with that is, when I do that, I'm about 18 seconds behind live feed. In other words, Preacher Mark is saying something, then I hear what he says 18 seconds later. So I've got one earphone in listening to what's going out to the world. Uh, on Facebook, and then in my other ear, I don't have an earphone in, I'm, I'm hearing Preacher Martin in case he says, hey, put this on the screen, or he says something and I need to feel like I need to put it on the screen with a, with a verse or something like that, <clears throat> you know, those kind of things. That's my biggest challenge, is that 18-second delay. It, to me, that's tough. I, I have a hard time with that. You say, why are you, what's that got to do with the relationship with called or remembering? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it is. <clears throat> because some days I sit back there and say, man, I wish it used to be like it used to be. But I'm not sure I really want that. I say that because it would be easier. Now, listen very carefully. I'm not for the pandemic. I'm not for the None of that stuff. That's not what I'm saying by far. I still don't like the mask, okay? I don't like wearing them, but I wear it. And I got several of them. I'm trying all different kinds of them. <clears throat> I, I think my wife is going, I'm going to have to build a closet in one room of the house to put all the masks that she's bought, purchased, or got given to her, or whatever the case may be. And she works with Knox County Schools. Not only does she has a mask, she's got one of those face shields. I want to wear that thing so bad one Sunday. But anyway, that's not what I want <clears throat> enjoy now. And I enjoy now because we're struggling a little bit. And it's making us work to get there. You say, well, that's, you're crazy. No, 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 no. I don't mean you have to work hard, but you got to struggle a little bit. You have to struggle a little bit to learn don't you? I mean, I did. I do. <clears throat> do you learn anything? If they say, hey, here, if you were in school, and here's this problem. I want you to work this problem out. If you just went to the computer and got the answer, does it work? Would you learn anything? No, you don't. Now, trust me. I do that to this day. Okay? I do that to this day with my grandkids when I have to help them with homework. 
<clears throat> I'll type in the, the problem and, and you can Google that problem and get the answer. And then I have to learn how it, did they place it in the right place? You know, first time I did it, I, I did it, I think I was doing fourth or fifth grade math, whatever they call it. You know, nothing's just math anymore. So anyway, I was doing that. <clears throat> And the girls came, Ellie came back over one other day and said, well, the first thing I have to do, Papa, I was doing my homework. I said, okay, well, let me help you. No, nope, no. Nope. I said, what do you mean, no? Nope? She said, excuse me, she said, no, nope, you can't help me. I said, why can't I help you? She said, Mom and Dad said you can't help me because the last time you helped me, you got five wrong. <laughs> she was right. I didn't even look up those questions. I didn't look up the answers. You know, sometimes we think we can. We just think we can do it. But when there's a struggle, we learn. And we need to remember that the, the call to remembering is to remember, as she says here, the Shuvah woman says here, as, as they are saying to her, <clears throat> what is worth it? Why this guy? Why is he so important? Why is he so good? Why is he worth this challenge? What is it with him? And this, this is why... This is why I think my wife wrote the Song of Solomon. Okay, Let, let's look down and go into the next section. And and the book, the the writers of the material called this the, the <coughs> excuse me the crooks for the crooks for celebrating. It's the important part. Why it's so important about this celebration that you have, and listen to her comments in verses. Start. Wow hit the wrong button there, didn't I? 10 through, let's just go through 10 through 13. I don't think you can handle all 16, all six verses. 10 through 13 says, My beloved is white and ruddy, chief among 10,000. I, I can hear my wife saying that. His head is like the finest gold. His locks are wavy. Now she wouldn't say this next line. And black as raven. <laughs> His eyes are like doves by the rivers of water washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lily dripping liquid myrrh. Can you imagine that? See, the, the significance here is to, for us to understand is not him or her, or which is better, or, oh man, I can't believe she said all those good things. About sometimes, when things are going on, and sometimes when we're having problems, sometimes we just need to stop and say, way to go, Lord. And sometimes we just need to stop and look around us. I mean, have you done it lately? In the last week? <clears throat> All the things been going on, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. It just piles up and it just piles up. And you just got to stop sometimes and say, wait a minute. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about how your grass grows? God does it. Yeah, have you ever thought about how your flowers grow? Oh, it's because I take care of them. I trim them. I cut them back. I, I prune them. I water them. I feed them. No, God does it. God didn't give you the water. You wouldn't have no way to water them. Hello? See, as this Shemite woman is remembering Simon, she's talking about how good he is. Sometimes we need to stop and remember how good God is. I was taught early on as a child, the way to pray is, first of all, ask God to forgive you so you'd be clean and, and worthy to be at his feet to intercede and to ask and then to praise him. You know, if I want to get your attention, I don't start out singing my song of sorrow. Because if I do, you just don't want to listen. Everybody's got problems. Hello. Everybody's got them. I mean, I could sing them to you. Everybody's got them. 
But if I start singing, first of all, or I start saying the things that I enjoy, the things that I love about being with you, and that's what we need to do with the Lord. We need to tell Him about those things. Those things. I told somebody this past week we were having baptism this Sunday. I was excited to see how we're going to accomplish it online. Okay, because that's my challenges. Preacher Mark has to be able to get back there, get changed, get into the baptistry, get out of the baptistry in time of the next. My challenge is to get it, record it, cut it, clip it, trim it, whatever you want to call send it over to the other computer so we can send it out to, we showed it during the 11 o'clock service and online today. Well, it worked. However, if you were in the 11 o'clock service, you saw the video. Uh, um, <laughs> Preacher Mark looked like one of them little, what was them little orange guys on <laughs> Willy Wonka? Oh, mercy, I don't know what happened. But anyway, the color was not good inside the building at 11 o'clock. But if you saw it online, it looked good. And so, uh, you know, when I meet with Preacher Mark this week and stab me, I'm, gonna say, I'm, in I'm I'm responsible for online. I can't have it. I'm not responsible for what happens in the building. That's Mitch's responsibility, and, and, and he was out of town this week. <laughs> okay, so we'll use, we'll use that as an example. We, we 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 get to the point sometimes where I, I was excited about that, and, and the folks were asking me, "How are you going to do a baptism online?" Well, I don't know what they were thinking. How you do a baptism online? Well, you you actually do it, and you just record it, and then show it. A lot of churches that are <clears throat> going on today right now that are doing things online. A lot of their, uh, we've been challenged by several different things that say, you know, you're, we need to up our music game, still have problems with the sound on music, and you need to, well, a lot of churches that do that are pre-recording that. Their music is pre-recorded. That's why it sounds so good and everything looks just right, blah, 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 because it's all pre-recorded, and then they just jump to, for example, in our case, we jump, cut into Preacher Mark Preaching. We just don't want to do that <clears throat> yet. We may change. We may do that. Um, but we hadn't done there. We're not there yet. I, I say all that to say this. <clears throat> don't get caught right where we're at. Remember the good things that God has given us. For example, Mark, Mark said he didn't look like Oompa Loompa. He looked like an angel. I Let's be thankful that we've had a pastor that has stayed with us this long. We have a pastor that preaches the word. A pastor that loves his flock. A pastor that is willing to do just about anything. Now, let me rephrase that. A, a pastor that is willing to do anything. We In, in the youth house, we've got all the stuff, <clears throat> food for the Bags of blessings for the middle school and high school that is down there that we've been storing down there. You know, that was some was left over and that type of stuff, and others have already started bringing stuff in. Well, the uh, air, condi air conditioning unit in that end of the building has been off for 14 days now. I had to have a part ordered, brought it in, came back, another part. Got to be ordered from the factory. So it hadn't had any air conditioning. So I was telling somebody <clears throat> this weekend, I said, we got to do something because I, I said, all them Hershey Kisses, they're, I mean, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. They're going to melt. And if they melt, all, here, they said, what are we going to do if it melts? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you to bring more Hershey Kisses. Because if that's the only thing stopping us, good grief, don't you think God can provide more Hershey Kisses? <laughs> Holy mackerel. He spends the universe. He spends everything that we know in this on this world in such a way, at such an angle, so that everything's just right. If he can do that, he can provide her little Hershey kisses. Oh my goodness. 
He can provide anything we need. Think of the good things. Think of the great things that God provides. And God will do it. Our relationship is not just between us, folks. It's between us and the Lord. If you'll focus on that, the rest of it will be okay. How does that mean? I'm focusing on the Lord, honey. Don't you bother me. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. Because when you start focusing your relationship with the Lord, you'll take care of the other. Verse 13. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid myrrh. Verse 14. His hands are rods of gold set with beryl. His body is covered ivory inlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble set of bases of fine gold. His countenance is like leaven, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughter of Jerusalem. Don't you wish your mate wrote all that? Let me tell you something. Mates, <laughs> spouses, that's why you ought to think of them. That's the way we ought to think of them. But listen to this. That's the way we ought to think of the Lord. Don't you get so sidetracked on you that you forget about him. The relational in, in investment is between you and him. When was the last time you said all this to the Lord? He's been taking care of you. He's been watching over for you. He's been doing all these things for you. What have you said to him? We're coming up on September be the National Sea at the Pole Day. I wonder what we'll do this year. Hey, I, 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 I don't know what we'll do. I'm just going to do it. I don't always make it to one of the school flagpoles, but I try to be there sometime. And if I'm not there, I'm going to be at my house praying. I'm going to be praying. I pray for our kids at school. I pray for our teachers and the workers and leaders in the schools. I do. I really do. But my prayer is not just to keep them safe, not just to help them to get by, not just to help them learn something, but to help them learn about the Lord. Lord, what can I do to help that? What can I do to be involved in that? Do you want me to be at the pole with it? I'll go. Do you want me to pray for them at home? Or do you want us to encourage the kid to take their Bibles to school again this year in October? Do you want us to be involved with Operation Christmas Child in November? And some folks say, you know, we can't do that and everything else Preacher Mark wants us to do. Listen very carefully. It falls right here. Hold on, listen. The scripture says I can do all things through Christ. How we can do it all. If nobody else wants to join, we'll do it all. Do I want to? Absolutely not. I don't want to do it all. I want others to be involved in doing it. That's why I want others to be able to operate the, the computer equipment. Why? 
In case I'm not there, no, it's not all about me. In case they move on from our church, they can go to another church and do it at that church. I, I was studying this past week, doing some study on online church. <clears throat> and, and there are churches out there. And I was reading this one or listening to him talk, actually. He's the online campus pastor, and he has 20,000 people in Bible study groups, small group Bible studies, which is what we call at New Providence, we call Sunday school or small groups. 20,000 people in there meeting regularly. Twenty thousand. I said, "Oh, good grief! I quit." <laughs> and then I had to think of that verse. Hey, I can do it all. We have to raise up others with us. We have to be involved. We have to get them in the game and build up this relationship. And it's all got to come together. All not for me. All not for New Providence, but all for Christ. It's all about him. We're not, not doing all this for us. The first church I pastored, it's called New Providence. I mean, um, I'm sorry, it's not called New Providence. The first church I pastored is called, is called Beach Park Baptist Church in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. First church I called a pastor. I, I was serving in a the church I grew up in as an interim pastor when they called me down to Beach Park. I went down there. I drove down there not long ago <clears throat> in the last month and, and the church has moved. Uh, they've sold that building and, and bought a, a shopping center. There's a movie theater, bowling alley, all used to be. Really nice facilities now. I drove down to where the old building is. It's a it's a bed and breakfast now. And I, I drove up there and I, and I stopped in the parking lot. And I just uh, sat there for a few minutes and said, Lord, did I, did I do what you wanted me to do while I was here? A am I the reason there's a windmill here? Did I do what you, did I invest enough? Did I do enough? And if not, I, I apologize to him. And, and I don't think that's it. I don't mean any disrespect to be, I love each part. I think they're doing great. But sometimes we need to evaluate our relationship with him and then realize, and realize what we need to be doing is understanding why we would celebrate anything. It's about him. Let me challenge you this week. Let me, let me give you a challenge. Let me challenge you to express your desire or, or the book says the admiration. Express your admiration this next week to the Lord. Now it says to couples, but I'm going to ask you to do it to the Lord. Express your admiration. How much do you admire the Lord? Express it to Him. You don't have to express it to me or to anybody at the church. Express it to Him. Express it to Him. And really, really, Strive for that to be even better. It's time. No, it's past time for us to invest in the relationship with the Lord. Will you invest in it this week? How about spend some more time in the Word? Whether it be a, a paper form, a tablet form, or a phone form. Doesn't matter if it's a New King James, an Old King James, an NIV, a CSB, or 
HTLM. I don't know. Invest some time in it so that you'll know what you're investing in. So that you can write these verses to the Lord. And I guarantee you, if you'll do that, your relationship with Him will blossom. And your relationship with your friends and family will blossom. Hey, what will you do this week? Will you do that? We get ready. <clears throat> don't forget, buckets of blessings coming up this Sunday. If you don't have the list, we'll put the post the list out tomorrow on Facebook, so you'll know what all items need to be in the bucket. If you don't have a bucket, call us, tell us, bring the stuff. We'll find a bucket. Home Depot has it. We have a hard time with somebody's buckets. Um, if anybody's watching and, and uh, knows which bucket I'm talking about, the lids may differ. Uh, we have a hard time stacking those. We have to be very careful with those, but I don't remember what brand. It's not Home Depot. I don't think it's... A, seems like it's Rural King, but I'm not sure. But anyway, just, just bring the bucket with the stuff in it. If you can get it in there, great. If you can't get it in there, just set the bucket on top. Set the bucket beside. We'll get it packed in there, all right? Just get her done. That that's the buckets of blessings. If you'll bring some little Debbie cakes and and uh, hold off on the chocolate one more week, if you if you would, we I'd appreciate that. So it won't <laughs> melt till we can get the air conditioner fixed in that part of the building. And uh, I mean, if you want to bring chocolate, bring it. Deb will eat it. I'm not a big chocolate person, but if you want to bring sweets, you know, we'll eat them. If you uh, talk to Ray and Betty Kinser, let them know that, uh, Ray, we, we ate all the tomatoes. The basket's there in the office. <laughs> so I'm, I'm afraid if I bring it by, he'll expect me. He'll think I, I want him to fill it back up. And I do, but I, I really don't. I'm grateful. We've had all kinds of folks bring us all kinds of stuff. Um, also, uh, it looks like Preacher Mark says we also need Little Debbie's and granola bars. Yuck. Granola bars. Hey, Carolyn, that's a good idea. Chocolate would be a great prize. I, I agree with you. I, I will check, I will check Wednesday of this week. Any of the chocolate that has melted, I will gladly give that as your prize for answering the question correctly, even though you cheated. I mean, I, no, you didn't cheat, but you know what I mean. Anyway, all right, let's see. Anything else, Preacher Mark, that we need to announce? Uh, thank you for your tithes and offerings. Continue to do that. We're grateful, grateful, grateful for a church that is willing to help us out all through this situation. <clears throat> um, and let's see. Choir, we need you. We need you back in there, all right? We need you to get back in there. We had about five of you in one service and six of you in another. So get back in there. Let's get out there, all right? So let's get her done. I had, uh, like I say, I think we, I, I think, um, Brother Charles counted like 80 in the first service and, and 75 in the second service. I think those were the numbers. I didn't look them up this afternoon. I was, I was busy doing some stuff online. <clears throat> so anyway, um, great, great numbers. Best numbers we've had. I just told Preacher Mark this past week, I, I ran a graph over the last eight weeks of our attendance. And I said, we've just, we've hit the, we've knocked the, the number 99 three or four times, but just can't bust over that 100. And today we just blew that clean out of the water. So we're grateful for you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Have a great week.